What is up everyone, microbiology class. So I'm gonna run through the learning objectives. This isn't really something you're gonna be able to read, just listen and you can either fill it out as you go or just listen to it. I know it's kind of late in the game. So here we go. Define the gram staining and morphological characteristics of the proteobacteria. So all proteobacteria are gram negative. Um, morphologically, there are many don't read stuff because you're not going to get nothing from that. There's many different uh, shapes. So they have curved shapes, they have rods, they have spiral shapes, they have cocci, they have uh, filamentous budding appendages. So proteobacteria have a lot of different shapes. Um, they also have an outer membrane made of lipopolysaccharide, uh, proteobacteria, chemolithotrophs, chemoorganotrophs, and phototrophic. And it is the largest and most metabolically diverse phylum of all bacteria. So that's proteobacteria. Um, let's move. Okay, and also here we go. What characteristics is yeast to group prokaryotes? It's the 16S RNA component of the 30S ribosome subunit. Um, so 16S RNA groups the prokaryotes into different groups different phylums. Um, where are they found? I don't know what that, I mean, they're found everywhere, I guess, is the answer. They're all over the place. Many different places they live. Um, what process has played, well, they're ubiquitous. Okay, what process has played a major role in the evolution of prokaryotes? Uh, horizontal gene flow. Horizontal gene flow through transformation, transduction, and conjugation has allowed for like major different evolutionary advances in prokaryotes. Um, explain anoxygenic photosynthesis. First off, that is basically where oxygen is not a product of photosynthesis. It's, it's anoxygenic. So it's photosynthesis, but doesn't produce oxygen. Um, first photosynthetic organisms were actually anoxygenic. Um, so, um, what pigments are you pigments are used by the purple phototrophic bacteria? It's the carotenoids and bacteria chlorophylls A or bacteria chlorophyll B. So those are the two pigments, carotenoids and bacterial chlorophyll A and B. Okay, oxygenic versus anoxygenic photosynthesis. Anoxygenic, basically, like I said, it doesn't produce oxygen. And it also only uses one photosystem, which has something to do with uh, chlorophyll and photosynthesis. And a lot of different phylums use this, six different phylums use this, including the proteobacteria use anoxygenic photosynthesis. Um, so oxygenic photosynthesis has two different reaction centers or photosystems, one and two, and they are used by cyanobacteria, so they use oxygenic photosynthesis. Um, okay, so know the habitat of the purple sulfur bacteria and how hydrogen sulfide is used. Well, the habitat are anoxic zones, so zones where there's no oxygen and they gotta be well lit. And H2S needs to be present, hydrogen sulfide. This purple sulfur bacteria use the H2S to support growth of the bacteria themselves, and they use it as the electron donor. Um, I'm not sure why I wrote that or what that means. That's a great thing about notes, you don't know what they mean. They're also found in uh, lakes, marine sediments, and sulfur springs. Know the common habitat of the nitrifying bacteria. They're widespread in water and soil. Nitrifying bacteria in water and soil. They have habitats with large amounts of ammonia, and these are like sewage treatment facilities or ponds with manure or wastewater. Um, okay, so what two chemical reactions are involved in the oxidation of ammonia to nitrate? Um, ammonia oxidizers and nitrate oxidizers. So here are the two chemical reactions. So you can see, you start off with ammonia in H3, and you oxidize it to nitrate 
I mean nitrate. That's the first reaction. The second reaction is taking a nitrite using nitrate oxidizers and oxidizing it to nitrate. And uh, basically the organisms that do this, the ammonia oxidizers are called nitroso, and then you add something to it. And the nitrate oxidizers are nitro, and you add something to the word. Mm. Um, do these bacteria use organic or inorganic carbon sources? Um, these nitrifying bacteria um, are chemoautotrophs. They use CO2 as a carbon source, so they use inorganic carbon sources. Um, nitrification is oxidation of ammonia to nitrite to nitrate. Okay. Um, this will be about a seven minute video, then I'll um, post a new one and we'll have a bunch of these for 30 minutes total. And whatever we get through, we get through. The ecological importance of nitrification. Um, okay, nitrification is really important because what happens is you take organic nitrogen and you oxidize it to nitrite then to nitrate and plants can use nitrate to make food. So they need the nitrogen in the form of nitrate so that they can make their food and of course plants, you know, the food from plants kind of is what most organisms use to live. So uh, that's why it's important ecologically so now it says to relate these three. So denitrification basically is using an organic carbon source. Um, and actually let's start, hold on, let's start with nitrification. Nitrification we saw is where you take ammonia, NH3, and you make it into nitrite, then to nitrate. Now denitrification takes the nitrate to nitrite all the way back to nitrogen. So it's kind of the reverse process. Um, and also denitrification happens in an anoxic, non-oxygen environment. And nitrification happens in a aerobic process. So there is oxygen. The last thing, fixation is taking nitrogen in the atmosphere and making it into an H3. All right, be out. Check out the next video, y'all.